Hey, this is John Lampley. Hi, I'm India Owens. Hi, my name is Louis Fouché. Hi, my name is Louis Cato. And this is inspired by Juneteenth, a Stay Human playlist. So, I actually did not grow up celebrating Juneteenth. I didn't find out about it until the rest of the outside world in the wake of the tragic murder of George Floyd. Uh, honestly, I felt a bit robbed. Um, like, oh my, there's like, we have our own holiday celebrating our emancipation and in 12 years of public, ed public education, no one said a word about this, you know? Um, so this past year, I took my young daughter uh, to a cookout and we both celebrated our first uh, Juneteenth and we talked about like, what the history, where it's from, what it meant to us and why, you know, what it's celebrating, what it has to do with our lives today and what she's able, the opportunities we're all able to be afforded because of those that like went before us. For me, Juneteenth um, was something that I didn't learn a lot about until until later. Um, when I was younger, I can remember being at church and, and hearing some of the elders, you know, say happy Juneteenth to each other um, on Sunday during Juneteenth weekend. Um, and also, I remember my mom brought home a book that was kind of just like a very brief general history of the event, but I didn't really dive in until later. And it was really interesting for me to discover kind of the history of it being equal parts, you know, celebrating, celebrating the freedom of black people, but, but also reflecting on the idea that a group of black people did not find out that they were free until two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation. So, you know, while there's time for celebration, it's just, it's, there's a lot to think about in that. And I think there's, um, it's beautiful to kind of celebrate and reflect. So one of the songs I chose for the playlist was Be Real Black For Me by Roberta Flack and Donny Hathaway. Uh, you might recognize it from the Scarface sample, but it actually came out in 1972. The reason I chose it was because uh, for me, it struck a personal note being that it was an anthem of black love that shown, it took very specific elements uh, of our being as black folks that society had made a mockery of like the size of our lips and the size of our frame and the uh, quality of our hair and shown it in, to be very beautiful in the context of a soulful love song. So, yeah. One of the songs that I chose for our Juneteenth playlist is Why We Sing by Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin is one of my all-time favorite artists. I wasn't allowed to listen to anything but church music until I was in high school. Um, and this was one of my favorite Kirk Franklin songs. And I love, um, he borrows lyrics from his eyes on the sparrow. And he's just kind of talking about why we sing, why we celebrate. And I thought it really tied in nicely to the theme for the playlist. So Juneteenth has always been a celebration for me in Detroit. As some of you might know, Detroit is considered as one of the nation's chocolate cities. Across the nation we celebrate, and Juneteenth is about integrity, pride, and just loving yourself. So as a child, I even remember being in festivals and parades during Juneteenth, and I would even walk on stilts with the other kids, and it would just be a celebration of life, a celebration of our ancestors, and a celebration of our heritage. And it's something to be so proud of every day and every second. I grew up in northeastern Pennsylvania. It's very rural, not very many black people. So needless to say, I did not learn about Juneteenth in school. But in my own black history nerddom, my readings I did outside of school, I ended up finding out about Juneteenth. But it wasn't until I went to New Orleans during the summers, I used to live with my grandparents, uh, that I really started to hear about Juneteenth. I knew of it as a Texas thing. People out in, te in Texas really uh, would cut up and celebrate for Juneteenth, and it was a very important celebration of culture and freedom. And I love that it's grown to national prominence. Um, I think we need more 
holidays that celebrate our black American history and culture and give us the opportunity to pay homage to our ancestors and also just to celebrate ourselves and the freedoms that we have now. One of the songs that I just had to add in this playlist is Symphony in E Minor composed by Florence Price. Florence Price was the first black female composer to ever have her composition played in the symphony. Florence Price set the precedent for so many black female composers after her, such as Margaret Bonds, Mary Lou Williams, Nina Simone, Jerry Allen, and even myself being a big band composer and an orchestral composer. Without Florence Price, we would not have a lot of the composers that we have today. And I'm so thankful to her as a bassist and composer myself. One of the songs that I chose for the playlist is Oh Freedom. I grew up hearing this song in church. We sang it in the youth choir and I've heard so many different variations of the song, but it was written around the end of the Civil War. Uh, so actually people who were alive around 1865, Juneteenth, the original Juneteenth, uh, would have been singing this song. Uh, and it is a proclamation of newly freed black folks of their own freedom. Uh, the song goes, Oh Freedom, Oh Freedom, Oh, freedom over me. And the line that really gets me is that, and before I'd be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. They said, I'd rather die than let you re-enslave me. It's such a powerful, powerful proclamation for people to be singing back then and it still resonates today. <laughs> 